Now, my next guest, ladies and gentlemen, he's not exactly what you would call a motivational speaker in that sense of the word, but you're about to be amazed. You are going to be that moved. Ladies and gentlemen, I leave him to introduce himself. Please welcome on to the Teju Babyface Show, Mr. Olakunle Shorinyo. Your hands together for him, please. Great to see you. Please be seated. Thank you very much. Please be seated, sir. I see you have brought a towel. Uh, yes. You sweat like me. Yes. Oh, feel free to mock whenever <laughs> oh, uh, the spirit takes you. Yes, feel free. Feel free. Uh, it is uh, it is hot in Africa. Yes. Yes, it's hot now. Although this towel is like you're going to take a bath here, but <laughs> it's all right. Great. Put your hands together one more time for Mr. Kulishwari. All right, Mr. Olakunle yeah. you uh, at the risk of lumping you up and saying you're a motivational speaker, tell us, what exactly do you do? Well, I'm a total life management trainer, coach, <laughs> consultant. I'm a social reformer. Um, I'm a radio host. I'm um, a CEO. Um, I'm a husband. <laughs> and, um, I'm a father. I'm a father. And um, I love Nigeria. Oh, great. That's, that's great stuff. Okay, so uh, I, I was at this event, if you remember, some uh, four years ago, yeah. where you gave this talk. And uh, if I remember, the crux of the matter is that before then, I'd always thought that it was necessary for people to be able to speak English, yes. uh, at least the way that I do. Yes. Uh, because around here, if you don't speak English like that, then you're considered an outcast and people Correct. laugh at you. Correct. Uh, and before then, I'd only heard two other gentlemen ever talk about uh, the need not to really know how to speak English. Uh, fella actually said... Uh, because I don't speak big on you, but you they tell me, say, I know civilized, I go shout you. Uh, fella was against that. And, and Lagbaja too was like, uh, you know, if I fire, you fire, I don't care. Mm. You know, not the beginning of crazy, but, but you know, I thought they were just two gentlemen on the other side of Afrobeat. So what did you say that day? I remember it, but I want them to hear. I, yes. I want all of you to hear what he said. Yes. It's, it's interesting. And, um, I feel very passionate about this because I think that is something that Nigerians need to begin to take a second look at. The, the idea is that um, a young friend of mine um, came to my house after about seven years of not seeing him. He had come to meet with his brother, who was in from the UK, and was staying with me. And um, he was very, quite brilliant when he was in secondary school. He was a very young chap. So I expected him, back. okay, by now this guy will be in the university or doing or graduated or something. So he said he was a cab driver and he came to raise money from his brother um, to, to get engine, uh, a new engine for his cab. So I said, ah, you're a cab driver, what happened? You were smart, you were intelligent, you know, you had something going way back. You, you were doing well in school. He said, well, he wanted to study law and he never could pass English. He, he, he could pass about three or four other subjects, including economics, government, and some other, but, but he couldn't pass English. I said, ah. So I started thinking to myself, this guy could not pass English language. What language did he use to pass the other four subjects? Uh -huh. First Question. of all, because he passed economics, he passed government, and some other subject like that. If he used English language to pass those subjects, and he could not use English language to pass English language, then something is fundamentally wrong. Then I said to myself, okay, it means when the examiner is testing him, is marking his paper, it means the examiner is not testing the use of English. He must be testing the technicality of English. Meaning that no matter how well he can speak, if he cannot tell the difference between a phrase and a clause, or a pronoun and an adjective, he will not pass. The next question would then be, what is the goal or the objective of Ligua Franca? Is it communication or sophistication? We are getting warm now. We are, we are, we are just getting warm now. We are, we're coming, we're coming. Because... <clears throat> Excuse me. If it is communication, our friend can communicate enough to pass for other subjects. So it means that this guy is not, he can communicate all he wants. If he doesn't meet the standards of technicality, then he cannot pass this subject. Now, those who sat down together to say that we need a legal franca, what was their goal? It was supposed to be an idea that binds us together and that allows us in a way to manage our diversity. 
in the, in, with, the, with the fact that we have different people with different languages all over the nation, so which is a beautiful thing, really. But how can we find one thing that all of us can have confidence in, so that when we speak anywhere, we can be fine? It can't be that we want to meet we want to meet a kind of standard that would define our superiority, because the Chinese does not need to master another man's English. And when you go to the United Nations, you see people who can speak English, refusing to speak English, insisting on speaking their mother tongue. And the United Nations will use our own money to pay for interpreters and all of that that will help everybody to understand what they are saying. The Chinese will say, tum, tum, tum. I don't agree. You can't say, no, you must speak English. Because globally, there is no language that is a standard or a determinant of progress. Mm. So that is critical. Now, here, English language is fantastic. There's nothing wrong with it. And I'm not saying we should take it away. I am saying that it is overrated. English language should not be a determinant of progress in our own country. It is not our fault. I'm speaking to you guys, right? It is not our fault that we have our language. If you can't say church, you can't even marry the girl of your dreams. Because if you go to a house on Sunday and you say, ah, we are going to church, and your daddy, the, the, the father of the girl says, where are you guys going? So we are going to church. That's the end. <laughs> I mean, she, he, she, he would just call his girlfriend, his, his daughter, and say, you've not found your husband, though. Except the father is also a church-speaking <laughs> father. Where church has met church. <laughs> Where church and has there are church So by sympathetic resonance, yeah, okay, they, sympathetic. they agree. Okay, great. But the idea is that we really have to take a second look at this. Because if I cannot say church and I say church, it's not a proof of my intelligence. It does not define the strength of my character. It does not show the credibility of my decency. And so the people who observe me, and so the people who observe me must have another kind of education that allows them to move beyond the limits of container, which is what the tongue can do. The tongue, your body, my suit, and everything I'm wearing right now is a container. My true content is the content of my character. And that has nothing to do with the way I speak. Now, this is the challenge. The guys in China, the guys in Japan, the guys in America, in England, in Germany, in France, they have learned four subjects in their native language. That's important. They've learned physics, chemistry, biology, and mathematics. Those four subjects make everything that is in this room. Physics, chemistry, biology, maths made your suit, your computer, your watch, everything in this room. Everything in the world, they made it. Every other subject is either selling what they make, distributing it, protecting it, or doing something. Mm. <laughs> now, the idea is that because they learned those, language, those subjects in their native languages, I believe it aided comprehension. Look, why are the richest nations in the world, the first world countries in the world, why are these nations all speaking their native languages? It's just food for thought. Why is it that Ligua Franca only exists in third world nations and nations that have been colonized? Is it not looking more and more like an agenda to keep us small? Because every time you ignore the gift of nature, you embrace another inferior fabric that in itself is artificial and cannot define your originality, your authenticity, and your strength. So, if there is a way that you can learn your subjects in your language, I'm telling you, you will do better. You will comprehend better. Now, you then ask me, so how do we communicate nationally? How do we talk to the guys in Kano and the guys in the, in, in, in the East and the guys everywhere? Exactly, because you are preempting my question. Because here I am looking at you like, I was about to say that two things. Uh, so what is your suggestion now that I speak Yoruba now on this program? And it's ironic because you are actually speaking the English. Yes. And the intensity of the English is making these creatures clap. I love you all. <laughs> and they are all clapping. So I mean, so what is the, I mean, do, do we see a bit of an irony here? Is, is that like a, a logical question to ask? So how do I communicate with... Yes. You? First of all, I would like to say that I don't have a problem with English language. We have accepted it for over 50 years now. There's nothing we can do about that. What I'm saying is, let us check it and put it in perspective. 
such that we can find a way to communicate, probably using the same language, but not hindering us from progressing. Because you can't even get a good job if you don't speak this language very well. And what is this language? This is a language that is artificial to you. Your nature is what is natural to you. And so I should judge you if you cannot speak Yoruba very well or you cannot speak Igbo very well. Now, pigeon is not an embarrassment. Pigeon is the proof. Pigeon, pigeon is the proof of a people's struggle with an original language. So, so there's pigeon French. There's pigeon, pigeon English. There's pigeon Yoruba. What's on Yoruba? You speak is pigeon. There's pigeon Igbo. Pigeon is proof of a people's struggle with an original language. So there's pigeon in every language. Clemens Westhoff is supposed to be the Super Eagles' most successful coach. Meanwhile, Super Eagles is the only team in the world. I hope you know. Okay. So this Clemens Westhoff is a, was a Dutch man. He came to Nigeria, spent some time here, won probably every competition, took us to the World Cup for the first time. But how does he speak? Tomorrow we play. Yekin is score. We win. That's how he talks. When he's training, go on, ball, move. Eh, that's how he talks. He never sh- shared one correct grammar in all his years in Nigeria and after he left Nigeria and before he came to Nigeria. Are we on the same page? Yeah. But he was understood by his players. He won matches and did great stuff for the country, isn't it? But nobody complained. When he's talking to the media, he's always shelling. There's no day Clemens Sessau does not share. Tomorrow we play Kenya, we win score. That's how he talks. <laughs> I'm come tomorrow from, from Nairobi, we go, we go camp. That's how he talks. All right? But you understand that he's not an Englishman. You understand that he's Dutch. But I doubt if that's what you really understand. I think what you understood really is that he's white. And because he's white, you can forgive that imbalance. Because Shino Peter said, I wish you soonest recover. <laughs> Some years ago. Um, it took him time to recover from that error. A long time. The media finished him everywhere. If I if I get here and I say, um, th- um, I, I'm thank you for bringing me, bringing me here. <laughs> that can be the end of the show. You guys can just say, who is this blast from the past? Who, I mean, who brought this guy here? You know. And that has nothing to do with the strength of my character. And even a lady will judge me. Even a lady will judge me. Even a lady will judge me with my struggle with that particular grammar. Yes. And I could be the best guy in town in terms of kindness, love. Because how well I can speak this grammar does not communicate the strength of how I'm able to love a woman. Yes. That was oh, okay, Mr. Shoryo. Great stuff. Great stuff. Great stuff. <laughs> I've heard you speak. If I leave you to go on and on, we'll spend all night here. So uh, it's not a question. Please bring all this to do still somewhere yes. so that we can end this segment. Fantastic. Because there are parts of this, there are parts of this stuff you haven't spoken about. Correct. There, there was a part you spoke about when the white people came to Africa for the first time and I, I absolutely love, see, we have to bring him back, yes? Yes. Yeah, if I, I think I'll dedicate one whole show to you. So please just help me bring this to a culmination. Yes, I'll do that excellently. I think that the way forward will be that I want everyone here, first of all, I'm going to give everyone seated a free subscription to my magazine called Thought Revolution. <laughs> And I want everyone, everyone in the audience and everybody watching the show right now to visit trnation.com. TR, T for toy, R for rabbit, nation.com. And if you go there and you, you get a free subscription, you access a magazine. The cover of the magazine is called Future Weeps. Future Weeps is talking about exactly what we are talking about. The embarrassment, the limits, and the nuisance of Ligua Franca. And how we need to put it in perspective. And the advice for Nigerians is very simple. Let everyone begin to rethink this thing and begin to push it within your area of influence. The two things I'll ask you to do is very simple. Never again judge anyone, laugh at anyone, scorn anyone because they are not masters of English language. Find the strength and the maturity to withhold judgment and stretch a bit further to find the strength of their character. And don't allow the weakness of a grammar to deny you the genius that may be resident in that person. And secondly... And secondly, I'm saying to government and to everyone who is listening to policymakers and everywhere to say that, can we reduce what English language represents? Let us speak it, but let it not be a determinant of progress in our nation. I think it's unfair. That's it.
to to e se gan e se gan joko e joko e lori owo awa yi nigba de de to bo nte so yi eh a wa le mo so yi bo mo so ka kuku mo lo le ka mo ba gbogbo e lo ai bo ni ka si mo se all right great stuff ladies and gentlemen as i told you he hasn't even started the talk i heard that he lasted for about 40 minutes I was rolling in my seat after a while you spoke of how the wise man came to Africa yes. and all that would you guys like to hear that yes. okay so I'll bring in I'll bring him in another time and he's going to speak on that you're going to love it the white man came and then the traditional African kings stood face to face in war and the man pointed his gun and you know it was beautiful stuff so I have him back here again Great. you should know like he said he's a life coach uh you should talk to him what's your this question is hard to ask these days but I'll ask what's your website um olakuleshorio.com That's so. <laughs> That's so. <laughs> Olakuleshorio.com. And the Shorio is because I'm on radio and people have been sending emails. We don't get some says Olakun Soya. Some say is is Sonya. Is S O R I Y A N. It's an Ijebu name. I'm sure you've never heard it before. Olakuleshorio. S O R I Y A N. One word dot com. All right, great. Uh so you can go to his website, all right? And uh very soon he's planning something for us. Uh Mr. Shorinyo and I will be going on a tour to some Nigerian schools. You can I'll announce it on the show. Great. You can catch us there. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been your made in Nigeria for this week. As I tell you, if you have a product or service, information useful for Africans, for Nigerians made in Nigeria, made in Africa, and if labor is cheaper, maybe made somewhere else, but mainly with us in mind, then you'll be on this show. And he has spoken made in Nigeria for Nigerians by a Nigerian. Thank you very much, Mr. Shorinyo. We we'll right back don't go anywhere. Please stay with us. Uh where's our picture frame? We have a picture platform oh from uh, our friends uh Court Photography. Oh. Here we are. Wow, this is just now. Yes, just now. Amazing. Yes, we we brought it sharp sharp. Wow. <laughs> wow. Look how guys do this. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Stay with us. We'll be right back.